Philippians 2, 3, and 4 says, Do nothing, nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility in mind regard one another as more important than yourself. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others, just like that. <laughs> How fitting that you did that during the reading of Look at the Interests of Others. Now, Lance, I need you to listen to me here. Okay. I exhort you, this is my exhortation to you, okay. to lead her by love and patience and not with power. It's love and patience. Christ's love for the church was demonstrated when he gave his life. And that's your marching orders. To give you a life for her. It's not about power. It's about sacrifice. And Tammy, for you... It's to respect him and to be very patient with his leadership. Because, you know, God's continuing to mold him and shape him. Mm -hmm. And the first place you need to go when you feel like he's not being the leader you need, he needs to be is not to him, it's to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to him because then the Lord will have prepared him for whatever it is you need to say. Yeah. But sometimes we want to jump in there and fix him. <laughs> and that can lead to some real problems. Yeah. You get that? Yeah, totally. Now here is the definition of love. And I read this at every wedding because I think it's important. I want you to hear the attributes. Here's what love is. It's patient and kind and not jealous, not boastful, not arrogant, not rude. It's not self-centered. It isn't angry. It doesn't keep track of wrongs. Wow, that's a big one. It isn't happy when injustice is done, but it is happy with the truth. Love never stops believing. It never stops hoping. And it simply never gives up. That's God's love. And that love has been birthed into both of you by His Spirit when you invited Him to be a part of your life. So there's never an excuse. That love's just waiting for you to tap into it and to share it with one another.